All right, before we uh, combine enthalpy and entropy to try to figure out if uh, something is spontaneous or not, a chemical reaction or a physical process, again, uh, that's gonna be important too, uh, let's just talk a little bit more about entropy and how we can figure out if entropy is increasing or decreasing. So the examples we talked about yesterday uh, are uh, phase changes, right? And that will tend to be true. So here's a uh, plot of entropy, which again is abbreviated S, as a function of temperature. And for thermodynamic props, properties, we usually uh, use Kelvin. So it's in Kelvin. So you can see that as you go from solid to liquid to gas, the entropy increases. And that is a good rule of thumb. Okay, you got to compare apples to apples. But in general, as you go from solid to liquid to gas, entropy increases. Yep, if disorder goes up, entropy goes up, yep. So the disorder is increasing when you go from solid to liquid because suddenly the molecules get to move around and they're more mixed up. When we go from liquid to gas, disorder increases even more because now the molecules have very little interaction with each other. They could be anywhere, anywhere in the volume of the container. Not pictured on this graph, but another one we saw last time was that when something goes from a solid to aqueous, entropy increases as well. Not only does we, do we go from a you know, ionic compound like sodium chloride, which is a crystal, very ordered structure of all those cations and anions, to aqueous ions swimming around, we're also going from a pure substance to a mixture. And so that's more entropic, more disordered as well. Uh, let's look at um, what happens when we are just keeping a sample in the same phase. So when we're just talking about, let's say, a solid. What's happening to the entropy as we increase the temperature? So temperature is going up this way. What's going on with the entropy? It's going up, yeah. So entropy turns out to increase um, as we increase uh, temperature. And that's for all three phases, and that's generally going to be true. So if entropy goes up as temperature goes up, what type of relationship is that? Directly proportional. So we could even write that a little bit mathematically. I already used baby blue. Go, hmm, orange. Entropy is proportional to temperature. And if you remember uh, last time we talked, you know, we drew little pictures of what a solid would look like and what a liquid would look like. We looked at a uh, liquid and then a gas, and we can kind of see just from these little cartoonish drawings that, yeah, it's looking more disordered. There's less order in that system. So let's draw two samples of the same thing. All right. All right, now we're just looking at two samples. Which one, box A, sample A, or sample B, would you say has the higher temperature? B. B, You're, I mean, they're just five little circles, poorly drawn, might I add. Okay, I could have put a lot of effort into those circles. You can tell I'm almost on break, all right? <laughs> Again, I got pie on the mind already. This is gonna be really weird. Like for future people who are watching this video, like pie on the mind. What if they're watching like in the spring semester? Like what's he talking about pie? It's Thanksgiving tomorrow. Future students, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. 
in the year 2017 AD. Okay. Yes, I'm talking to you from the past. That's what they just did. That's what that. All right. So yeah, these are just circles being drawn, but you can look at it like, yeah, B would be higher temperature if this were in liquid phase, maybe than the gas phase or anything. Um, so B would be higher temp. Uh, which one has more disorder or higher entropy, A or B? B? Yeah, B. Higher entropy, higher temperature, higher entropy. All right, so here's what I want to do. All right, so let's figure out what happens to the entropy when we change the temperature of a solid 10 degrees. All right, so this is from zero. This is zero Kelvin. And then, of course, uh, water uh, freezes or melts at zero degrees Celsius. So what's that, 273? So this is 273. All right, so this isn't going to be the scale on their scale, but I'll try to keep the, the, the distances, the change in temperature, the same here. So let's say I go from zero to here. This is going to be 10 Kelvin. So I increase the temperature 10 Kelvin. Let's see what happens to the entropy. The entropy goes from here. Here's the entropy at zero. Here's the entropy at 10 Kelvin. So that's going to be like right here. So this is my entropy change uh, when my delta T went up by 10 degrees, 10 Kelvin, from 0 to 10. Now at the higher temperature, the other end of this spectrum, okay, let's see, so is that distance the same as, nope, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so is this the same as this about? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's about. So that's 10 on my axis. So this will be 263 Kelvin to 273. So I increase the same amount of temperature, 10 Kelvin in each case. Let's look at what happened to the entropy. Now 263, the entropy was here. I went up 10 degrees, so the entropy is here. Now this is where I need a ruler. Oh man. I'll just eyeball it. So there's, need a ruler. Need some of the straight. All right, let's just do this. Okay, we happy with those lines now? Yeah. So here's how much my entropy went up from 263 to 273. It didn't go up that much, right? The entropy went up a lot more from 0 to 10 than from 263 to 273. Okay? And we could have just realized that with the slope of this line. What's happening to the slope? It's starting to flatten out. All right? So as the temperature increases, the entropy doesn't increase that much. All right? So entropy increases a lot at lower temperatures and a lot less at higher temperatures. Yes, that word. What's the difference between the 273 where it's being measured at B compared to the 273? <coughs> oh, so from, what's the difference between here and here? Yeah. That's, uh, that's when it's a solid down here, and now it's a liquid way up here. So there's a huge jump in entropy when it goes from a solid to liquid. But entropy does increase, increase as a temperature. All right, so that's a phase change. Entropy goes through the roof when we do those phase changes. But the whole ice cube per se won't take effect within one second. It will take time to melt overall, so that would be still a small process like that. Yeah, I mean, no. So, yeah, it does take time and energy to go from a solid at zero degrees Celsius to liquid at zero degrees. That's the heat of uh, fusion. But it, won't it doesn't happen that much. Uh, so Well, we're not, we're not talking about time, how long this is. But you, if you have a solid at zero degrees Celsius or a liquid at zero degrees Celsius, the liquid is going to have a lot more entropy, a lot higher entropy. 
Okay. All right, so it turns out that entropy, since entropy doesn't go up as much at higher temperatures, entropy is inversely proportional to the change in temperature, meaning that changes in temperature make a big diff much bigger difference at the lower temperatures than the higher temperatures. So how we say that is that the change in entropy, the entropy is inversely proportional to the change in temperature. All right, so those are close, but very, very different. Entropy is import, uh, blah, blah, blah. Entropy is directly proportional to temperature, higher temperature, higher entropy. Entropy changes go, uh, or entropy is uh, smaller with the inverse, inversely proportional to change in temperature. So the bigger the change in temperature, the smaller the change in the entropy. The bigger the change in the temperature, no, so the, the higher the temperature is, the smaller the change in entropy. That's what I want to say. So both cases, the sample went up 10 degrees. All right, so we gave it however much energy that takes to go up 10 degrees. And since it's the solid, it's the same amount of energy. So I'm giving the, the higher temperature sample, entropy increases less than the lower temperature sample. Its entropy goes up a lot. So basically it matters more to the colder object than it does the hotter object. And there's a good analogy to help uh, you, uh, at least me, hopefully you as well, help you understand this. And, you know, we got to just call on our, our good friend, <coughs> Uh, Bill Gates, one more time, okay? So Bill Gates turns out to be a pretty rich guy. He's up here, all right? He is, he's the high temperature sample, so he's got a lot of money, okay? So let's think of somebody with a lot less money. Hmm, maybe like your local community college chemistry professor, okay? <laughs> so I'm down here, okay? Not worth uh, $80 billion. If you, I mean, I'm not going to tell you exactly how much I'm worth, but it's not $80 billion, okay? <laughs> All right, so if you give Bill Gates $20, he's up here, high temperature. Is that going to matter much to Bill Gates? No, it's not going to matter. He already has a lot, of higher, a lot more money. Now, if you give me $20, is that going to make a big difference to me? Yeah, you better believe it's going to make a big difference. I'm going out to eat. All right, I'm getting some Subway. All right. Yeah, 20 bucks is going to make a bigger difference to me at the uh, lower end of the uh, net worth scale than Bill Gates. So the same thing happens for this, okay? The, sa the, tamp the sample with the lower temperature gaining that amount of heat makes a big difference to it. Whereas the sample with the, at the higher temperature just doesn't matter as much, okay? Now this is, the, we need to do this because we're going to use it eventually in an equation when we start calculating entropy. That's really why I'm talking about it. But it also explains why heat, how does heat transfer? From the cold object to the hot object or the hot object to the cold object? Always transfers from the hot object to the cold object. Why can't the cold object give the hot object energy? Okay. It technically can. I mean, a cold molecule can bump into a hot molecule and transfer that energy. But it could. It could. But it turns out that the hot molecule, the hot object, if it gains some heat, its entropy doesn't go up that much. The cold object, if it gains some heat, its entropy is going to go up a lot more, even if we're transferring the same amount of heat. And we are, because if you're looking at a system versus surroundings, uh, law of conservation of energy per se. So the entropy for the cold object goes up a lot. The entropy for the hot object, which lost energy, so it's actually going down in temperature, only lost a little bit of entropy. And what's the second law of thermodynamics? Entropy always increases. So it has to increase. If I transfer heat, that's a change. Entropy has to increase. So the hot object's going to go down a little bit. The cold object's gonna go up a lot. Guess what? Entropy increases. So that, that's why hot, uh, the heat always transfers from the hot to the cold, because it's a net 
positive in entropy. All right, so that's our relationships uh, for entropy. And specifically, uh, we're going to use these three quite a bit. Entropy increases when you go from solid to liquid to gas. Entropy also increases when you go from solid to aqueous ions, like dissolving. And solubility increases with temperature. Again, we're going to use this in an equation later. So just store that, you know, shelve that somewhere in your brain. But these ones are where we're going to use quite a bit. Actually, let's go back here. That's what I screwed up. I knew I wasn't doing this right. It just I was saying it, and it didn't feel right. All right, I put my deltas in the wrong spot. So the change in entropy is inversely proportional to the, the temperature. Screwing me up. This is, what I, this is the relationship I want. Entropy is proportional to temperature, but entropy, change in entropy is inversely proportional to temperature. That's what I wanted to say there. I think I started, getting, I started thinking about getting 20 bucks. I just got excited. My, my mind was turned off for a second. All right, it's life changing. I might not come into work tomorrow. <laughs>